meet students who are studying in the Architectural Engineering and Design program here at Northwestern's McCormick School of Engineering had a very special beginning to their fall quarter. They took a trip to Berlin to study the future of architecture by looking back at the past. Berlin has really interesting architecture because it was completely destroyed by World War II. So it's very obvious to see where a new building has been erected in its place. There'll be, you know, old, old, new, old, old, new. And certain areas, they were entirely destroyed. This was the third year of this architectural engineering and design program here at Northwestern. And it's the first year that we did a field trip. And in this case, it was to Berlin. It's something that we thought would be particularly successful and interesting and fun. Leif Seltkraig from RISE, seen here on the far right, worked with the student's professor, Larry Booth, seen here on the far left, to design an unprecedented journey for the group that was filled with at least one surprise. But first, the students wanted to take a closer look at sustainability in Berlin. Using money from a grant they received, they went on a series of guided tours throughout the city, studying a number of examples of smart construction. We got to see, you know, various projects that they put in to develop sustainability and not just as like lead, you know, just put, put the points on there, it's just integral to the building. Every German building by law is over double as energy efficient as any American building. The sustainable buildings also stand out for another reason in Berlin, now unified city, after being bitterly divided into east and west sectors for so many years. You could kind of feel the difference between the East and the West. We, we walked actually way back into it to go to a, a store at one point, and you could see lower buildings and sort of more uniform shapes and everything, whereas opposed on the, on the West side, everything was a bit newer, and all the, that's where all the new development was. So it's really interesting to see sort of the dichotomy there. The enormous Sony Center is perhaps one of the best examples of that dichotomy. When I first walked into the Sony Center, I was really impressed by how much 3D space it had. It was right, left, but also up. The space is really high. And this space soon became the focus of a surprise assignment for the students, one dreamed up by Helmut Jahn, the Chicago-based architect who regularly returns to his Berlin design studio. I agreed to do this because uh, they're all uh, involved in this relationship between architecture and engineering and how the integration of those disciplines can kind of make a better architect and make a better engineer and ultimately make a better building. The project was uh, to take the Sony Center space and to think of an event that would be plausible in the space and then to design a way in which that event could be implemented. I decided to go with uh, a combination of an art installation and a biology exhibit. The idea was to suspend these large like biospheres above the Sony Center and people could walk around them and, and look into them and see what's going on. And you could also use it as a science experiment and design a whole ecosystem to be housed in those things. So it was part art, part science. Well, my idea was to create a hip-hop spectacular performance with uh, at least three different stages and then with telescoping catwalks that expanded to another center stage that would rise up and kind of create a hand of God effect with the needle that was pointing down from the Sony Center already. And they had just a few days to pull all this off, working alongside Helmut Jan and his colleagues in their compact studio. What's creating the environments? How does that happen inside? So the next 48 hours were the most intense of the journey. The students kept long hours in the drafting room, making sure their ideas would work, then talking them out with each other. Their final goal? To convince a jury in a series of appearances that their ideas transferred into workable designs and events. What I really wanted to do was make sure I used this, the whole volume, not just um, sort of be stuck to the ground and using that. It was really great. So obviously we're sitting in front of Helmut Jan, Werner Sobeck, and Leif uh, Selkraig and Larry was there. And so just like these, these really amazing minds and engineers and architects. What really came out of it for me was not just uh, information about what I did, but also sort of how they, they interacted. They did a lot of tangents about you know, design in general and archi architectural engineering and all this stuff. So it was really great to see that sort of thing. One after another, each student took the suggestions 
literally went back to their drawing boards, made changes, and then came back to present to the jury one more time. In the end... I was uh, really blown away by how um, worthwhile it was for the students. I learned to stick with my ideas and really to develop them. And I also learned the importance of presentation. It was an amazing experience that students at our level in architecture will never get to do. To be sitting in an office of Helmut Jahn is amazing. I mean, no less, I was sitting right next to him. The most valuable part was just being in the office and seeing how it worked. Working with Helmut, first off, was really, really fantastic. I think just the jury, having him on a jury, that's something that I'll, I'll bring with me throughout my career. The trip was so successful that... It really has become, in my mind, an integral part of the program. And uh, several of the students, I think, are very interested in going on to architecture schools.